last but not least, I want to share with you some magic tricks. The magic of filmmaking, the magic of doing movies. So it's about world building and the storytelling. Yeah, you may imagine what is that. World building, creating worlds of fantasy and science fiction for movies. That sounds interesting. But what is the secret recipe to do such thing? Simple word as we know it, imagination. But it's not just a word itself. I believe in magic, of course. I'm a magician. I consider myself a, mag a magician. But I need to understand the true power of words. In this case, I use this beautiful word. If you just look at it, it has different meanings. So you just divide it into different ways. You have I, which is myself, magic, nation. Makes sense. But it's a nation of magicians. So just starting with that factor, I realized that I have that power, the power of a magician. All that story starts when I was a kid. Like any other kid in the world, you just have fun with the simple thing of life. Just going to the pool is like going to the ocean. You just have all these floating things around you. You have you know, games with your cousins, your friends. You play with that small cardboard, and that thing is the best thing ever. That's the power of innocence. That's the power of simplicity. When we're kids, we just care about the now. We don't care about the future. We don't care about all things that are outside in the world that is happening. We just care about the simplicity. We care about like, all these magical elements that are around us, surrounding us every time. We have that power, the power of innocence. And I keep being nurturing that idea, that dream when I was a little kid, you know? So the only way for me to do that is like drawing. That's the tool that I use, the tool that I chose. Drawing, painting, creating these worlds. And you can look at me, you know, this chubby guy sitting there drawing with my, small, my, my, my little sister, like drawing these things, taking this so serious. I, I'm very committed to that thing, very, com very committed to the sense of magic. Like I'm creating this, this is mine. I own this moment, I believe in those things. So I grew up like with this popular culture, like watching movies, video games, you know, like all these kids. I'm from the 80s, by the way. So those are my initial references, you know? Those movies like Robocop, like Conan the Barbarian, Back to the Future from Steven Spielberg, and we have Indiana Jones. And for me, watching those movies, it was not like watching a movie, actually. It's like from an adult watching a documentary. For me, it was like a documentary. It's like, whoa, this guy explored these antiques and all these places, and his name is Indiana Jones. And also, if we have a DeLorean, a car traveling to the past, and they call it back to the future. But for me, it was like real. I definitely believe in those worlds, but I also make a promise for myself. I say, I, I want to create something like that. I believe in those worlds, therefore, I want to live in those worlds. So I start creating some sort of mindset in myself to keep that child always there. Because to be a child for me is to capture that innocence, that magic, that magical factor that drives me through all this reality. So it's a way of looking the reality through the eyes of a kid. And I start like getting a compilation of different artists, different references from different parts of the world, France, Japan, US, and it's like, oh, I want to do that. I want to do that for a living. I want to make spaceships for a living. That sounds crazy. But then I realized that if I keep that dream, awake, I probably have some luck doing that. And I made it. I was terribly happy at that time. Oh my God, I'm able to draw ships for a living, spaceships, planets, and so on. I feel so inspired. And I feel that I'm probably committed to that little kid that is constantly talking to me. I small little word is like, hey, remember me? You have to follow that. I said, okay, okay. And I make through the work and I'm being able to work with these guys. That was so awesome, an honor working with them. And I look at the work that they do and I say, those guys over there are kids as well. They convince people through their artwork, through their movies. And I'm able, I'm fortunate enough to work with them. That was always a big honor for me. And the time keeps moving and I'm just growing up 
how in references and how Master Joy are talking to me. You must follow your dreams. But also, I create my own quotes. For me, in order to inspire other people, I need to be inspired first. You know? It's like, it's not like, it's got give and take. If I need to inspire people through my work, you can name it a movie or a piece of art, I need to be inspired. I need to channel that energy in order for, to, for me to give you that. So the best way for me, the formula, is just be a child again. When everything is so simple, when you can see the real magic of things, when you can capture the essence, all these factors that exist in reality to this, turn something real into something surreal and give it to people. Give that hope of being a child again. So I'm going to share with you some stories. Again, growing up as a kid, you grow up with you know, comics, animation. In this case, I'm going to quote something from Japanese animation. They call it manga, anime. You know, you're familiar with Dragon Ball, Naruto. I'm still watching those. I'm still a kid. I cannot deny it. But the first time I went to Japan, I stepped in Japan, I was like, whoa. It's exactly how they put it in the animation. That was amazing. It's crazy. Of course, because I'm looking that through the filter as a kid. I'm not looking that as an adult, like, oh, it's a new country, it's a car. You know, I was like, whoa, the spaceship. Whoa, what is that? What is this? What is... So for me, it's like alien planet. So I feel like an alien. I like to feel like that. And I do, through, through that process, I like to create the commentation. Not only experience what I see, it's what I feel, what I eat, what I hear, what I, all those things, all those senses are connected to that experience for me to capture those things. Because I'm an adult, I'm still a kid, but also I need to put logic in those, in those inspirational elements. And through that documentation, I turn myself into it. I put a kimono and I read manga. And I start like, looking like an old samurai. Because I'm in that, in that character. So it's not like oh, I'm just getting inspired. No, I need to be in that character. So when I'm designing uh, creatures or characters for a movie, I'm inside that character. I believe in that character. Therefore, whatever I'm designing, you will believe it. You cannot believe in a character if it definitely doesn't carry that energy. So that's my responsibility. I feel like that, definitely, every time I go to Japan. And ex exactly do that, of course, I don't need that much, but I feel like that. Why not? So this is part of the documentation that I do when I travel. I like to do it through the methodology, to the, through the skill set that I'm used to, through my discipline of visual development. So just sitting there in a cafe or something, just documenting things, writing things, writing notes. But I say, oh, I want to take it to the next level. I want to make it look like a real piece of animation. I want to transport myself to these worlds. So I start like, I'm going to use my skills, and I'm going to create pictures in that similarity, in that kind of vibe. So this is myself and my wife in a rooftop maybe in a Japanese city, I don't know. But it's just putting myself into that image, transport myself into that world. And I'm just thinking that it's not about creating the image for the sake of doing images. It's me, me analyzing the colors, vibrant colors, vibrant shapes, elements that inside of your heads is gonna say, oh, it's gonna transport me to that scenario, to that Japanese scenario. So that's my duty when I'm creating these images. And so on. I put myself as like an avatar. You know, I, I create something. I, I am a world opinion in this area. But when I put myself, I'm a different person there. And I believe in that world. Therefore, if I don't believe in that world, I cannot make those decisions to create the images. And so on. This is another example of a friend of mine. And I put her in this kind of setting. I know part of her past. And sometimes she carry a lot of burden behind her. And I say, you know what? I'm going to turn you into a character, animation character. So that burden is going to be a metaphor. And that metaphor is going to be a heavyweight robot. But that robot behind you is just going to be the old rusty burden of your past. And you, you're going to look through the future. So you're going to be that hero in this animation future, in this movie. And it's good for me. Bring those ideals, bring those things into the picture. I believe in that. I turn in that in a metaphor. Therefore, she is in that picture, and so on. I'm enjoying the normal life, and I'm enjoying the nightlife, and I'm putting, for example, here my wife. 
like looking through those buildings and ceilings, some messy stuff. But all decision making that I do when I create those images is capturing all these things, sensations when I visit those um, Asian cities, in this case, Japan. Um, this is probably myself enjoying a karaoke, or maybe not, with a lot of cats. But this is the kind of funny factor that I perceive when I see people singing. You know, I, I just analyze and say, wow, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty fun. So this is the way how I see people singing karaoke over there. And I try to put it in that image and capture that moment. So on at night as well, capturing the neon light, the, the steamy food uh, in the streets, and all those things comes together in the image, like capturing that essence of magic. But I cannot do that through the channeling the little kid inside of me, because I have to put constantly the glasses of being amazing, like, wow, everything is new, everything is amazing. That's very important for my job, for the nature of my job. Another example, this is uh, me and my dad in Vietnam. Well, my, my, my wife is Vietnamese, so I have to put something in Vietnam. <laughs> And I'm enjoying some of these delicacies. They call it a bami. It's a very nice sandwich. And I said, like, I want to do the same exercise that I did back in Tokyo. And I started like, documenting elements. You know, if some people have been in Vietnam or you're not, you will understand through the images because that's my duty. So I just start putting like some sketches, some notes, and then I come with an image. This is Vietnam. You know, like this chaotic, or organized chaos, and people in the bags, you have like chicken floating around, you, the rice of noodles, and all those things. And I showed that to my wife, it's like, oh, it's exactly like that. And you never been in Vietnam, you say, wow, that's actually Vietnam. So it's capturing those things in the one image through the storytelling. I tell a big story, I tell a big event into one image. You can call it a piece of art or whatever you kind of call it. But for me, it's capturing that element, utilizing my glasses as a kid and put it in the back and tell a story, transport you to that world. And I try to capture simple things when I see like the, the old lady just chopping the chicken. And it's like, that's how I see it. And the guy in the back, hey, I don't know where I am. And the kid, hey, you go that way. You know, I, I, I see all those things. And I just try to capture and put them together for you to enjoy that image. Like, that looks fun, you know? So that's my duty, transport you to these worlds. How do you do that? Again, when you're a kid, you're lying down. That's myself, by the way. And you look to the sky, you see clouds. You do all the time, you do that exercise, hey, that looks like my auntie, <laughs> you know, all this stuff. But when you are a kid, you see, you see the clouds, and this is what happens to me. I see a spaceship, I see planets. I keep seeing these things all the time. And this is now grown up Eduardo. I don't lie down on the floor anymore. By now I analyze buildings, cars, things happening. And I say, I want to take them to the next level. What about if I take that building and turn it into a nice story, science fiction story? And here I am. I'm creating with one cloud, I'm creating two characters. This is a personal story of mine, similar to Gardens of the Galaxy or Star Wars, two smugglers or mercenaries in the, in the galaxy. They are in the spaceship, building all these adventures. And they, they need to fly away to get the rewards. So they're getting an agreement, business partners, I don't know, they're just talking. And of course, it's a cat over there. They're just preparing you know, their journey. And they probably may have difficulties getting some aliens, chasing some this and that. And probably after that, they need to go inside a city and do some merchandising. So I start believing all these little moments in their lives, you know, representing all those things that I live in my normal life, like walking in the streets. So I say, oh, I want to make a street like that, or probably escaping from someone. So I create those stories just with utilizing one cloud as an initial reference, as an inspiration. Escaping from someone that is chasing me, and then jumping in a rooftop, and so on to be continued. There's too many things happening in this story. But the, my, my, my example here is that everything starts with the simplicity, with experiences. Like the reality for me is not just A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, five. There's too many layers of depth. And the layers of depth, I need to see through my eyes of creativity that everyone can do that exercise. It's just going back when everything was very simple. When you were a kid, everything was simple. You just worry about the now. 
You don't worry about the future, you don't worry about bills, you don't worry about this and that, political stuff. No, no, no. It's everything about simplicity and things being amazing. Return to that state of mindset. See your old photos when you were a kid. And think about what were you were thinking when you were a kid. Those things were very simple. And people think, oh, you are talented, you are skillful. No, no, no. Everyone has that power. Everyone has the ability to turn again into a kid, to be inspired and to inspire other people in different kind of crafts. In my case, I chose the path to be a visual developer. And because of that mentality, I was able, I'm mean, still able to work on movies, to make those things believable, so people believe in those movies. People, people believe in for two hours, like, that was a nice ride, a science fiction world. And just for that reaction, that's the reward that I get back home. And I feel happy for that, because I have magic. I convince people that those worlds can exist for two hours. That's for me enough, and give you a very nice emotional response, a moral that you can give back when you're just imagining things. Don't be a kid like this. <laughs> of course not. I'm talking about return back when you're, you're more innocent. Not like a child like that, of course not. You can create different worlds. You can be different characters. You can do whatever you want. No boundaries, no fear. But again, it's always constantly looking at the world with different glasses. A little bit of innocence, a little bit of childish state will not harm you. The opposite of that, you will create different and beautiful results. And I just want to quote something. No, just kidding. I don't want to quote. Just be like him, Gandalf. He's a magician. He's old. If I can make it, I can make it as well. So thank you so much. Study.